Um, so welcome everyone to the job training overview webinar. My name is Stacy Hoyle. I'm the workforce development manager um, for the SOMA program and I'm going to introduce you to two of my colleagues on the SOMA program. We have joining us today Ingrid Morillo, who is our workforce development coordinator, and Omar Roca Rodriguez, who is an outreach coordinator with the SOMA PA as well. So hello to all of you and good morning. Um, I'm going to go over just quickly the agenda and the agenda and then um, we'll hop right into it with getting through an overview of the job training requirements, some job training resources that and services that the PA can provide to support you all as contractors with these job training requirements, and then um, some onboarding and communication tips job site safety expectations and then of course we'll wrap up with a question and answer session at the very end. Um, a little bit of housekeeping next. So what to expect? We'll, we will have, uh, there's just two polls today, just a little bit of engagement, not asking a lot, um, but we do have two poll questions scattered throughout for you all. So I'll, I'll cue those up when they're ready. And really it's just for us to get an idea of um, how you're planning to facilitate your job training uh, experience on the SOMA projects. And then we'll have the question and answer session at the end. You can submit questions anytime. Uh, this is Zoom webinar. So on, on the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see a little Q&A icon. At any time throughout the presentation, you can submit a question just by typing it in. Um, and I think attendees will be able to see other folks' questions. You, I, I don't know if I have the settings where you can upvote them or comment on them, but if you do see that, feel free to utilize that. Um, and then we will verbally uh, ask each question during the Q&A session and give an answer. And if there's something that's very specific to one person, we might um, dismiss that one publicly and then just follow up with you directly. But for the most part, we, we expect that folks will have questions that would be beneficial for everyone. Um, and then the slides will be emailed to you after the webinar and we are recording this so it'll be available on SOMA's YouTube page for you to view later or share with any of your colleagues. All right, moving on. Um, I'm now going to pass it over to Omar who's going to take us through an overview of the job training requirements. Awesome. Thank you, Stacey. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the job training requirement is mandated by the original legislation that created the SOMA program. The requirement is intended to stimulate local economic and workforce development in disadvantaged and frontline communities across California. Over the course of the 10-year program, SOMA will create thousands of job training opportunities that will provide valuable experience for the next solar workforce. These job training opportunities can also benefit contractors in many ways. For example, the training opportunity can be viewed as an on-the-job interview and showcase off-the-job training skills and knowledge. This is also an opportunity for you, the contractor and employer, to make a good impression on the trainee who may be a potential permanent, permanent hire. And finally, by hiring local job trainees and employees, you show a commitment to the community you are serving with while building trust. So job training hours. Now I'll talk a bit about the hours and how that works. So SOMA requires contractors to hire job trainees based off the size of the system being. Um, for example, a system that is sized between zero to 50 kilowatts will need to hire one job trainee who will work no less than 40 hours. Um, larger systems over hundred kilowatts will require two job trainees to work at least 80 hours each. So it is a good idea to consider hiring more job trainees than the project requires. In any case, any job trainees leave their position early or voluntarily or involuntarily before completing the required number of work hours. So contractors will be required to fulfill the remaining training hours. So to meet the SOMA job training requirements, job trainees can either participate directly on the SOMA installation or participate in a supporting role for that project. Job training may occur on or off the site from the project. Examples of the SOMA job training tasks include pre-installation roles in project design and engineering, which include assessing the project site, configuring the mechanical and electrical design, and preparing projects, documentation, and securing permits and, and approvals. Uh, also, the reconciliation of the PV system, which includes installing PV modules, mounting system, electrical equipment, and system monitoring hardware. Lastly, post-installation roles in PV commissioning 
and maintenance, which include conducting electrical and mechanical tests and verifying system operation. Additional examples of job training tasks can be found in section 2.6 of the SOMA handbook. Awesome. So job training wages. So contractors must pay the SOMA job trainees either the contractor's entry level rate or 1.4 of the local minimum wage or the SOMA project takes place, whichever is higher. So for cities and counties that do not have a lo local minimum wage ordinance, the California min minimum wage is $14 and the minimum SOMA will, wage will be 19.60 uh, per hour. Uh, for some California cities and counties have minimum wages that are different from the California state. Um, so it is a contractor responsibility to verify the local minimum wage in the city and county where the SOMA property is located and pay the appropriate SOMA wage based on that specific area. SOMA wages will be verified on the job training, training affidavit submitted in the incentive claim form, sorry, in the incentive claim milestone of each project. It is important to note that contractors must pay trainees from their own budget. Wages are not paid from the SOMA funds and contractors must pay the job trainees within 30 days, 30 days of completing the work. So eligible job trainees. So to be eligible for SOMA job training opportunities, an individual must be uh, currently enrolled in an eligible job training program, recently graduated from an eligible job training program within 12 months of the start date of the summer project, and, or a tenant whose primary residence is the summer property. So uh, other considerations. Um, so eligible job trainees must complete the job training intake form in order to participate in the summer job training. Eligibility as a job training lasts for at least 12 months, beginning from the training first day of work on any SOMA project. A job trainee can work on multiple SOMA projects within those 12 months. Contractors may have existing staff that meet the job training definition. These individuals are eligible to participate as SOMA job trainees as long as they meet the three eligibility criteria outlined in the previous slide. Eligible job training programs include 40 hours or more of instructional and, and or hands-on PV installation and design training offered by uh, California community colleges, local government workforce development programs, community nonprofits, private enterprises, and electrical worker unions. Career technical education programs related to green building construction or design are offering 40 hours or more of instruction are also, also eligible. Local and targeted hiring guidelines are designed to ensure that jobs are directed to residents or individuals who need them the most. While the local and targeted hiring is not required, it is strongly, strongly encouraged. The SOMA PA provides resources that can help facilitate the hiring process. Additionally, contractors who are utilizing our bidding platforms will have the opportunity to describe elements of their local and targeted hire plan, such as wages, benefits, and services on the project bid form. For the purposes of SOMA projects, a local hire is an individual who resides within the county in which a SOMA project is taking place. Targeted may be targets, targeted hires may be may be individuals who are residents of disadvantaged communities, residents of affordable housing, women, people of color, and individuals who have faced or overcome barriers to employment, such as citizens re-entering the from, from the criminal justice system. Uh, recruiting job trainees. There are three main ways to recruit eligible trainees. The first one is through the SOMA job training portal where you can post jobs and browse the resume bank. We will give a live tour of the job training portal in a few minutes later throughout the presentation. Uh, the second option is to reach out directly to SOMA eligible job training organizations. Uh, there is a directory available on the job training portal, which is searchable by zip code. Finally, you can recruit tenants of the SOMA property. Tenants should already be aware of the opportunity as part of the tenant education requirement. However, if you want to take this approach, we suggest that you, you connect with a property owner to, uh, for outreach to tenants. So in order to receive the incentive package and remain in good standing with SOMA, uh, contractors must abide by the job training requirements for each SOMA project they participate in. So here are some important milestones to remember throughout the job training experience. So each job training opportunity should, should be entered into the job training portal at least 60 days. So 60 days before installation begins. Contractors are encouraged to enter the job 
before the 60 day requirement to ensure that timely notification to the SOMA PA and recruitment. You can recruit job trainees by any of the three methods mentioned on the previous slide. So once you hired an once you hire and onboard the job trainees, you should mark the job posting as closed in the job training portal. When onboarding job trainees, contractors must ensure that the company's insurance covers the employment of the job trainees. Contractors are responsible for ensuring that each hired job trainee completes the job training and tick form. The form can be found online on CalSOMA.org website or a PDF version can, can be emailed to the SOMA PA. Once a job trainee completes a required number of hours working on the SOMA project, contractors must pay the job trainee within 30 days. 30 days. To confirm that the contractor has fulfilled the job training requirements, contractors must submit a job training affidavit in paraclerk during the incentive plate package milestone. And finally, contractors are required to respond to surveys on job training performance and retention for up to one year after the SOMA project is completed. A survey is sent immediately after submitting the job trainee affidavit and following up follow up surveys are sent three, six, and nine months. If the contractor reports hiring the job trainee on their permanent staff, examples of these surveys can be found in the appendix of the SOMA program handbook. So when planning for each SOMA project, be sure to keep 60 day timeline in mind. Contractors must enter the job training position for each project into the job training portal at least at least 60 days or more before construction is estimated to begin. This marks the beginning of your training recruitment and notifies the SOMA program administration team that you are nearing the installation phase. Um, so a job training affidavit will be submitted each pro per each project and power clerk during the incentive play milestone of the application process. The job training app confirms information about the trainee or trainees that they hired for the summer project, including the name, information, dates, employment, wage, they were paid, uh, nothing so much wage for requirements, sorry, and the type of work they perform. While the data and information can be entered directly into power clerk, both the job trainee and the contractor will need to sign the PDF form prior to uploading the signed copy and submitting the form in power clerk. The incentive claim milestone may come several months after construction and installation have been completed. So be sure to fill out the PDF version of the job training affidavit and have trainees sign the affidavit as soon as their job training positions are completed. You can save the file until you're ready to upload the power clerk. So make sure uh, this, this uh, document is filled out you know, right after the completion of the project. You don't wanna lose that job training. Uh, so subcontract responsibilities. Approved SOMA subcontractors who have completed all contractor eligibility requirements may facilitate the job trainee opportunities and the following responsibilities. So they need to enter and manage the job training posting and job training portal, recruit, hire, and, and onboard job trainees, pay the job trainee directly, and complete surveys about job training performance and post project employment. Primary contractors or the primary applicant of the SOMA project are responsible for submitting the job training affidavit and power clerk. So with that said, I will pass it over to Stacy for our first poll question. It's hard to get myself off mute and share screen at the same time. All right, we have a poll question. So let me launch it very quickly and you all will be able to click on your answer directly on the screen. So the poll question is, what is the primary position you plan to hire SOMA job trainees for? Is it the pre-installation roles of helping with project design, engineering, site assessment? Are you planning to mostly hire trainees for direct installation of the system? Or are you going to um, have trainees work on the post-installation phase of that commissioning or maintaining the system? Um, the other option is that you might plan on having trainees see the full entire project phase or scope um, or have trainees work on different aspects. And if you aren't a contractor, answer as if you, you would or you, you, the position you might be interested in trainees working on. Awesome. So while we're wrapping up that poll, I do see we have some questions already coming in. So thank you for submitting those questions. We're going to stock those away for the Q&A session later. All right. Looks like we have some answers. I'm going to end poll. 
share the results. And it looks like we have quite a mix of folks planning on installation roles, post-installation roles, and um, a little bit of everything. So thank you all for your participation. It's really, it's helpful for us to know what contractors are planning for so that we can um, engage with job training organizations that maybe specialize in that area, in training their folks in that area, or how can we prepare trainees better for the roles that you want to hire them for. Um, so that's really helpful information. Thank you all. All right. Now I'm going to close out of polls and I think we are kicking it over to Ingrid to tell us about, um, first we heard from Omar about all of these requirements um, in the job training category for SOMA. And now we want to ease your worries and tell you about the resources and support that we as the SOMA PA can provide to make this as easy as possible for all of you. So Ingrid, take it away. Hi everyone, thanks for joining the webinar. Um, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, I'm gonna go over a live demo of um, the job portal and how you can um, look for resumes in our resume bank, post a job and manage jobs um, and look at the directory of eligible job training organizations. So you can reach out to them in, to recruit for any upcoming projects. Um, let me share my screen. So if you um, go into our job portal and that's at calsoma.org slash job portal, basically to get to this part and have a username, you can reach out to us and we'll create one for you. And then, and then your username will be your email dot soma. Um, it also has that, those instructions here, because um, a lot of people forget that. So your username will be um, your email plus dot soma. Um, and here's an example. And if you are having trouble logging in, please contact the SOMA program administrator at workforce at calsoma.org. Um, and then type in your password. When you create, when we create an account for you, you'll be, um, you'll be, you'll be able to create your own password. And then after you log in, you'll get to this page. Let's go, let's look at the resume bank. If you, um, so again, this will be the job portal. This will be the home page. You'll see this picture. It'll say, welcome to the SOMA job training portal. Um, if you scroll down, you'll be able to, again, add your company's training opportunities and post a job search for eligible job trainees in the resume bank um, and search for some eligible job training organizations in the organization directory and review, review applicants and manage your job postings by clicking on manage jobs. You can use these links here or you can also um, use the links in the bottom. So here is the resume bank. Um, you can see people and these are trainees, eligible trainees from all over um, the state of California. So again, Omar went over these um, training job requirements. To be an eligible trainee, they have to have um, 40 hour tr training from an eligible job training organization provider. Um, so you can look up for those, look up all of those eligible trainees here. Um, and also you can uh, refine your search by region. Um, and by the way, if you see a test, um, a test in the name that is one of us. So um, you can just ignore that. Um, but you can search by zip code. Um, so you put in the zip code, you put in the radius, and then you filter. And you can see there's um, Alejandro Acero there as a trainee. Um, so that's how you can search on the resume bank. And then I'll, I'll also just add in that um, we have a lot, we have over 300 job trainees signed up on the portal, but um, only a, a percentage of those, maybe about 50% have actually added their resume to the resume bank. So one of the things we're working on as the PA this year is um, engaging those trainees through a newsletter and calls and emails and making sure that they are adding their resume to the resume bank so that you as the employers can um, you know, have the, see the full pipeline of trainees available. Thanks for um, adding that comment. And 
now we can go over to posting a job. Um, to post a job, you click on the post a job link. Um, you would put in your company, um, Solar Company X, the test company. Um, you would put in the position title. So um, please be mindful that uh, a lot of these trainees um, will include this on the resume. So um, you can call it, you know, solar installation trainee or solar installation um, or solar installer, but you just be mindful that um, they're going to put it on the resume. So it has to be something related to what they will be um, doing. And then um, on the job description, I'm going to go over this section in more detail in the slides, but um, you basically want to um, write in like the location where the city, or county, or the neighborhood, even the neighborhood of, of the, the project, the start and end date. Um, and it would be helpful if you could add the schedule, like what which hours, because a lot of times trainee uh, job seekers will ask us. The hourly wage, and we'll get into what the hourly wage will be um, or should be. And uh, other be benefits or equipment provided, um, number of positions available, a uh, brief description of the company, and specific tasks that um, the trainee will be working on. Um, and then the project city. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put in San Diego because that's where I'm from. And the, you would enter that city's local minimum wage. So I know for San Diego, it's $14 per hour and it'll automatically um, upload the SOMA training wage, which is 1960. So you can pay them 1960 or more, but that's the floor. Um, and the SOMA project zip code, this is my uh, zip code. Um, and then the SOMA application number, which should be um, SOMA. I don't want to get this wrong, Stacy, and I forgot. What is the correct? It, it's usually the short, it's the, it's the application number generated by the project application in Power Clerk. So it's generally um, a shorthand of the utility or IOU that the project is in. So if you're doing San Diego, Ingrid, it would be SD-SOMA. Um, and then it's a followed by a five digit number that's specific to that project number. So, um, you know, for our example purposes, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> Thank you. And then it's very important that you click on publicly available if you want um, trainees to be able to see that job um, on the job portal, on the job seeker side. If you do not click this, then they will not be able to see it. Um, and yeah, so it's very important that you click it if you want to actively recruit on the job portal. Um, so this is the um, description and you can actually see it. Um, you go back home and then you go to manage jobs. Um, so you see there that um, there's a couple of open positions. Um, so you can post multiple positions um, in the job portal. Um, so that is how you post a job, search on the resume bank and manage jobs. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to um, use our organization directory. So you just click on that tab um, and you, know, um, you can use the contact information for these job training organizations um, to contact them and actively, and have you know actively recruit from those organizations. A lot of times they'll have cohorts that are graduating and looking for jobs. So um, please use this resource. It's here for you to use. If again, if you have any questions on how to use any of these resources, please reach out to um, workforce at calsona.org. And that is the live demonstration. So we're going to go to the slides portion. Um, Stacy, could you cue that up, please? Absolutely. All right. And I think we're going to switch to the next slide. Thanks. Um, yeah, so for job training portal, the contractors have um, multiple, can have multiple accounts for the job training portal. Um, if you know you um, have, if you identify staff who need an account, um, you can have individual staff members 
instead of shared companies accounts. Um, and if you have any, like if you need any uh, additional accounts, please reach out to workforce at Um And yeah, so job training portal responsibilities include entering and managing job training positions, um, and then post uh, project job training surveys. And also um, when a position is filled, you can, um, you can show that on the job training portal. Um, so <clears throat> on the job, this is for the job description tips on the job training portal. Um, again, you wanna put in the location, um, the start and end date of the project, the hourly wage, um, other benefits or equipment um, that will be provided, the number of positions available, um, any company descriptions, specific tasks, um, required or preferred experience, skills, certifications, or training, um, languages spoken by staff and trainers, um, any application instructions, uh, equal, op equal employment opportunity statements, um, and COVID-19 precautions. There will be a list of 60 eligible, sorry, the job training organization directory is a list of 60 plus eligible job training programs. Um, it includes program name, location, contact information, and you can search by keyword and zip code. This is one of the examples of our job training organizations. This is the East Los Angeles Skills Center in Los Angeles, California. Uh, so yeah, so just to give you an idea what these job training organizations, um, they prepare trainees and um, this one is NAPSEP accredited for PV for a PV installation program. It's got 700, 700 plus hours of in PV installation, safety, tool competency, electrical integration, solar thermal and energy auditing. And it serves um, the DAX territory or the disability um, the, our DAX and reentering citizens, which is our targeted um, or priority uh, job seekers. And um, it's got a partnership with Homeboy Industries. Next slide. I'll just also add in, we've, we've already placed probably over 20 of their students and graduates on SOMA projects so far, and some of whom have been um, retained by the employers or contractors for permanent positions. So um, they're a really great program. And a lot of, actually, most of their trainees get their um, electrical trainee card as well. So they're registered electrical trainees with the state of California. Thanks. And then this other job training organization is Future Build. Um, Future Build is a nonprofit organization in Pittsburgh, California, that's in Contra Costa County, um, and it offers a 16-week pre-apprenticeship program um, in the building trades, construction, hazardous waste, solar um, theory and installation. Um, it partners with local solar installers for hands-on solar installation experience, um, and they offer OSHA 10 CPR first date. Um, tra uh, terrain forklift and has has Whopper 40 certifications. Um, and then this is Center for Employment Training. Um, Center for Employment Training is a private technical training center with multiple locations across the state. Um, and their Fulton location is in San Bernardino County and it offers a green building construction skills program with over 900 plus um, hours of classroom and hands-on construction in carpentry, electrical skills, plumbing, and solar PV systems. Um, and CET Colton also partners with local installers to get students real world experience. Um, so we also offer, the SOMA PA also offers tenant education services, has recently developed support for SOMA participants um, where the PA and local um, Community-based organizations can support contractors and property, property owners in meeting the tenant education requirements in a meaningful way. Um, we can conduct customized workshops for specific tenants. Um, we have done adult workshops with kids and, and, and kids workshops and even interactive presentation for folks with special needs. And part of the tenant education is transforming the tenants, is informing the tenants that they are eligible for the paid job training opportunities. 
Um, we can also help interested tenants complete the trainee intake form and apply to open positions. And these images are from a recent tenant education workshop we did in Stockton where the contractor specifically wanted to hire tenants for this project. Um, and there they are in the picture signing up for um, the uh, trainee, signing up for the trainee intake form. Another resource that the SOMA PA provides to help you hire local job trainees is the local job opportunities flyer. Um, and this flyer is located in the tenant education toolkit with the additional materials. Um, and contractors can fill in their company contact information and list um, available civil positions, then distribute the flyers to residents of the civil property or in the local community. Um, and we understand that the job training requirements may seem complicated or, over, or overwhelming. And the SOMA PA team is here to support you with every step. Um, reach out to us at workforce at calsoma.org well in advance of your project beginning in installation and we will walk you through the process. Um, in addition to supporting you with the job training portal and entering positions, we also provide outreach and recruitment services for local job training organizations and local job trainees for each project. We have a pipeline of over 60 job training programs and over 300 trainees in the job training portal. And you can tell us what skills or experience you are looking for, and we will find trainees for the job. Um, this process does require up to two months, which is why we need contractors to enter each position in the portal at least 60 days before the construction phase begins. Um, and additionally, as mentioned, we can provide tenant education services and support you in recruiting tenants of the property um, to participate. Um, that's the end of, of the presentation, um, or my part of the presentation. And we have a poll question here. Stacey, do you wanna, do you wanna yeah. poll people? I will queue it up. All right, there's another poll question. It's actually our last one. Let me go ahead and launch that. All right, so the question for you all is, which primary method do you plan to use to recruit job trainees for your SOMA projects? Um, using the SOMA job training portal to post the job, receive applications through there. Are you going to contact eligible job training organizations or programs um, that are local to the project using our JTO directory? Or are you going to recruit tenants of the SOMA property during tenant education workshops? Um, or are you gonna try all means? And also while you're filling out the poll, um, just reminding folks that we are, um, we have a few more slides of content and then we're gonna get to the Q&A session. So if you have questions that popped up during the presentation, feel free to go ahead and put them in the, the Q&A bubble at the bottom and we'll uh, get to that during that session. All right, go ahead and end the poll. Looks like most folks are going to use the job training portal. So that's great. So definitely it is required to enter it. But by selecting this, I'm assuming you mean you're going to make those jobs public so that all 300 of our trainees on the portal can see that job and apply if they're in the area and meet the qualifications. Um, but as always, you can reach out to us, the PA, um, for any support using the portal, or we can we can try all of these methods. Honestly, um, we can if you let us know in advance, we can start reaching out to job training organizations for you and get some folks lined up. All right. All right. So now we have some tips for onboarding and communicating with job trainees. So. A little bit of a checklist. Once you have recruited and selected the appropriate number of job trainees for the SOMA project, remember it is based, it's a, a scaled or a tiered system based on the size of the, the PV system you're installing based on the kilowatts. Um, you should sign into the job training portal and mark that job as filled. And you can also um, mark the selected trainees. If they apply directly through the portal to the job, you can select them as the higher trainees. Um, you also need to make sure that the job trainees have completed the job trainee intake form. So um, if they're already on the job training portal, that means they already filled out the intake form. But say if you had recruited the trainee by contacting a local job training organization, 
be sure part of your responsibility as the contractor is to make sure that they complete the intake form. And what that is, is it lets it collects contact information, demographic information about the trainee. So um, that's how we're doing our, our analysis on our back end. Um, and if, you, if you're unsure, you can just email us or give us a call and say, hey, has this person completed the intake form? And either Ingrid or myself can check on that for you. Um, and while this is not a um, program requirement, it is a good idea to produce an offer letter with the dates and terms of the SOMA employment and have the, both the trainee and a representative from your company sign, sign the letter. Um, and finally, be sure to notify any on-site staff that might be interacting with the job trainee or assisting with training. Um, this may seem obvious, but we've had some cases where a trainee has showed up, been hired by, say, a recruiter, and um, the crew was, was not quite unformed, but everything worked out. All right. So for some contractors, onboarding job trainees and new hires is a frequent occurrence. If you're a larger company, um, you might already have robust protocols for ensuring they're prepared for the job site. However, here's just a few details we recommend that you communicate to job trainees before they get to the SOMA job site, just to make sure that they're prepared. You know, these, these are often um, students who are coming fresh out of a training program, and this might be their first job, or this might be their first uh, construction-related job or solar-related job. So there are um, details specific to this kind of work that folks will need to know before they, they get to their first day. Um, so, um, you know, this might be, um, you know, you can communicate directly with the trainee via email or phone call, or sometimes you can communicate with a, a contact of the trainee. So that might be their, their job, the, their instructor at the job training organization who helps you recruit them. Um, they're often a good conduit of information to their, their trainees and students. So, you should be sure that the trainee knows what to expect. And this might include any company onboarding procedures. Um, is that gonna be, are they gonna need to do a background check uh, or a drug test? Um, is there a safety orientation or safety information they need to know before they, they get to the job site? Behavioral expectations and any company policies you want them to know. Um, they definitely need to know what time to arrive driving or parking directions to the site, any project details that you might want them to know ahead of time, like how big of a system are we installing? Is this a ground mounted system? Are they gonna be on the, expected to be on the roof? Um, that sort of thing, project details. And so what to bring? Should they bring any documents like an I-9 form or W-4? Should they bring their own water, lunch? Um, should they be bringing their own tools or is that something you're providing? Also any fall protection. So another thing to note is who is the on-site supervisor and point of contact, and I would recommend providing a phone number for that person to the trainee so that they know who to contact in any case that they're running late or just need to ask a quick question. Um, and finally, when and how they will receive their pay after their training hours are done. So this might be um, specific instructions on filling out a timesheet or how to submit uh, mileage for reimbursement if you're providing re uh, mileage reimbursement. You may also wanna explain the job trainees employment status at your company. So some, some contractors are hiring trainees on as uh, 1099 contractors or temporary employees and how this would affect um, their taxes. So all things to keep in mind. All right, once the trainee is on the job site, it's important to select a strong site supervisor who's going to take the time to train and educate the job trainees. We really hope that this is both a meaningful experience for the trainee, but also for your crew and your company um, to get the opportunity to see um, a potential long-term hire in action and also provide that mentorship. Um, so we suggest asking the trainee what their goals are and identify any specific skills they want to work on. Maybe it's using a specific tool they haven't gotten to use and they want to be able to put that on their resume. Um, maybe it's uh, working with the electrical work a little bit more. Um, so set clear expectation of daily work plans, breaks, and safety protocols. Um, at the beginning of the day, and then also be sure to take time to give the job trainee feedback on their work and progress, whether that's verbal feedback at the job site, or maybe it's a written email or report after, their, um, after the project is done. We really encourage you to, to provide that feedback as part of the training experience. All right, 
So it's a good idea to make sure all the relevant stakeholders at your company and those working on the SOMA project are aware of the job trainees employment. I mentioned the, the story earlier. Um, within your company, check in, check with the folks in human resources and administration departments so they can provide internal guidance on um, what kind of an employment status we should be hiring the, the trainee on as any payroll details or um, as we mentioned earlier, it is required that you cover the trainee under your um, in company insurance while they're working. So that's important to make sure. Um, and again, make sure everyone on the SOMA project team or the on-site crew is aware and prepared to train and answer any questions. And we suggest notifying the property owners that trainees will be on site. Um, if they're a SOMA property owner, of course, they, they are aware of the job training requirement. Um, but good to have their buy-in, especially if it's a tenant working on the project. Um, and finally, it's a good idea to notify any subcontractors, even if they're not working directly with the trainees. So last section is about safety. Um, we saved the most important for last, of course, and safety is extremely important to the SOMA PA. In addition to following all federal, state, and local labor laws, including having an injury and illness prevention plan and a code of safety practices, we will provide some recommendations to contractors to ensure everyone working on SOMA job sites remains safe. So the PA um, expects contractors to ensure safe and harassment-free workplaces for job trainees and tenants. And while most of the feedback we're getting from trainees has been incredibly positive, um, great experiences with their contractors and crews, um, the PA has unfortunately received several complaints from job trainees and their job training organization representatives about bad experiences working on SOMA projects. Um, and the PA takes these concerns very seriously. Um, some of the concerns we've received are over safety concerns, some are um, discrimination reports, and so we take these incredibly seriously and have discussed these issues with many of SOMA's stakeholders, including the Advisory Council, Job Training Organization Task Force, the CPUC Energy Division, um, and our community-based organization partners, and all stakeholders agree that it's critical that trainees are are and feel safe on um, and, and respected on SOMA job sites and that their rights as employees are upheld. So um, in order to address these, these issues, we are exploring a number of new resources and trainings um, this year and potentially rolling out next year, including a code of conduct for all SOMA participants that would be everyone from contractors, property owners, tenants, job trainees, um, PA members, we're also hosting a Know Your Rights, um, Know Your Employment Rights training for prospective job trainees on December 16th, hosted by Ingrid. Um, we have some great speakers coming to, to let trainees know about their rights. And then we're also, to address some safety concerns, we're going to explore hosting an online safety training for job trainees. This would be a fully funded um, OSHA 10 certification training for, for train, prospective trainees who are not already getting that in their training program. Um, so recognizing that safety, especially that baseline, is very important on all job sites. Um, we want to take a proactive role in that. And then we're also creating a comprehensive solar job site safety guide, which would, could be used by contractors um, and also an informative resource for trainees. And we're continuing to collect trainee feedback um, through surveys and reporting and testimonials and things like that, and just ensuring that they're having a good experience overall. Okay, so seasoned contractors are likely well aware of typical job site safety hazards, but new job trainees, especially those with no previous construction experience, should be educated on safety precautions and equipment, including personal protective equipment, PPE, that could be how to wear a helmet, um, you know, wearing gloves in what specific instances they might need that, how to wear a harness or fall protection, ear and eye protection. Um, they should be educated on electrical safety, uh, proper ladder placement, environmental hazards like heat, dehydration, fatigue, um, wildfire smoke, unfortunately. And now we have, you know, of course, COVID-19 is a precaution we need to make sure everyone is aware of and, and how to prevent um, the spread of that. And of course, um, muscle injuries that can be be prevented with proper stretching and breaks. Um, it's also important for site supervisors to be aware of and talk about emotional and mental health um, with job trainees and employees on the job site. 
noting that everyone comes to work with different experiences, trauma, and perspectives, and um, these experiences can really affect our work and how we interact with coworkers. Um, and additionally, you know, we're still in an active COVID-19 pandemic, so we want Con we expect contractors to follow all local, state, and federal guidelines uh, for protecting against COVID-19 on um, in the workplace. Okay, so in addition to the required labor, labor law posters, we recommend that you have the following on the job site. A staff sign-in sheet is important to note who was on the job site that day if any incidents occur. Um, a morning, a daily morning stretch and flex guide, so getting folks stretched out and, and ready so to prevent any of those um, muscle injuries, and then a daily safety talk to identify common and site-specific safety hazards. So um, every job site is a little different. Everything has a little bit of a different setup or a different hazard. So it's important to point those out that's specific to that project. Um, and then we recommend having a job site safety manual on site that any, any trainee, staff member, crew member can access or refer to. Um, and this would include your injury and prevention, uh, injury and illness prevention plans, an emergency response plan, um, and this might list where the nearest local hospital is, and any material safety data sheets for chemicals or equipment used, um, as well as recommendations for safely using specific tools. We also recommend that site supervisors and foremen are OSHA 10 and CPR certified, um, just in case anything happens, they are equipped and ready. All right, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. So I'm gonna give everyone like just a couple minutes to submit questions. I know we, we haven't left a ton of time here at the end, um, but if you do have any other questions, please submit them at this time. Um, even if you've already submitted one, don't be shy. <laughs> Bring them our way. And then you can always email us later if you, if you wanna follow up directly with us or have a specific question about a specific incident or scenario. Um, we are always here to help. So give folks like just another minute and then we will answer the questions. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. So you see all of the panelists. Then looks like we have a few questions coming in. Um, we can go ahead and answer those. Um, so the first question we have is, can my current crew member count as a job trainee? Um, Omar, did you wanna answer that one? Yes, yes, yes. So excellent, excellent question. So, uh, so to answer that question, yes, existing staff can count as their SOMA job trainee, as long as they meet one of the other eligibility criteria, either a current student or a recent graduate, from a SOMA eligible job training program or a tenant of a SOMA property would qualify. Um, so yes. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, and we we often see this and we have um, contractors who will ask us, you know, and and the best thing is just if you if you had if you're unsure or uncertain, you can email or call us and we will um, help you work through their eligibility. Um, all right. The next question, Ingrid, I'm gonna give this one to you. Um, it says, we regular, regularly recruit from a solar training program that is not listed on the SOMA job training organization directory. How can we get their program added to the directory? Yeah, thank you for that question. We welcome referrals to solar job training programs from our contractors. Um, so if you know of a program, you can email us at workforce at calsoma.org with the name of the program and a point of contact. Um, and our team will set up a meeting with the program to verify details. If they are SOMA eligible, uh, we will add them to our directory and you can hire their students and graduates as SOMA trainees. All right, thanks Ingrid. Um, and the last question we've received so far is, what happens if one of my trainees quits before finishing their 80 required work hours? Um, this could be like their required work hours were 80 or 40. 
Um, we consider this, you know, an early termination of a trainee. And we actually have some, some guidance in a, the SOMA program handbook about this. Um, but we do understand that these circumstances are going to arise from time to time that are totally beyond your as the contractor's control um, or anyone's control. Maybe the trainee got a full-time job offer and, you know, obviously we support them in taking that. Um, but contractors still need to meet the requirements. And so if anything happens um, that disrupts the job training requirements being completed, contractors just need to reach out to the SOMA PA um, within five business days of anything happening like this. And you can email us at workforce at calsoma.org and the PA will advise you on alternative compliance pathways. Um, so we have some um, options available for you to complete the, the nature of that job training requirement. All right, well, that concludes our webinar. Um, if you do have any follow-up questions, you know where to find us. Uh, Ingrid, if you'll chat in our email, workforce at calsoma.org, um, you can reach us there and um, we will reach back out or give you a call. And thanks everyone for joining us and good luck with your SOMA projects.